I'm here in the Christian quarter, heading to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I think most of you already know that I'm blessing crosses for you, and I can send it to you. I'm buying it from a Christian shop, mainly because there are no tourists at all, and now they close their sky again. Then, in that case, uh, I want to help the 2% of, uh, of the citizens that need our help. And um, Samer, say hi. Hi, everyone. Happy yeah. holidays. Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry Christmas. And the happiest new year ever, 2022. Great. You know what? We need it. We need it. Absolutely. Great. Then let's go together to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. And I'm blessing today the cross, the Jerusalem cross of John Komkov and his wife Elizabeth and Kate, their little child. Uh, it's going to be a regular tour at the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Uh, and I will uh, bless it there. Why it's important for me to bless the crosses? First of all, some of you cannot enter. Uh, the, you cannot, they cannot enter Israel now because no tourists can enter to Israel. Some, some of you are a little bit old to, for that. But if you want a peace from the Holy Land, then that's what I'm doing. I'm blessing the crosses this time for John in the Church of the Holy Sepulcher because that's what he wanted me to do. And, um, and if you want more, more about it, just... Um, Then, here's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Before I will start the tour for you, John, Elizabeth, and uh, Kate, my little Kate. Oh, I saw the picture of her. And uh, if you are buying the, uh, the, the crosses, please send me as much information as I can, uh, because I want to bless everyone that you want. And um, then the, the uh, how can you see it? Um, no problem, just go into the link of buy me a coffee at the description of that movie and if not, just uh, uh, ask me, uh, write me, uh, write me and I will send you the link for it. Then the church is kind of old and new. Um, it's the oldest, 4th century. And that's where St. Helen built it for the first time. But it's been destroyed so many times then. Here you can see a little bit from the 12th, a little bit from the 11th century. And uh, almost the end of the 12th. I mean, there's so many, so many dates here. But it's, uh, it's, um, it, it, it's amazing for me. I mean, this is my, one of my favorite places. But I mu you must understand that there are more than one church. Uh, more than one place that mentioned the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. There's another place that's called the Garden Tomb, and it's outside the Damascus Gate, out of the walls, like the Bible said. But I must tell you that this place was outside the walls as well. And you must understand that this is uh, a huge difference between now and then. Think about your city. That city is more than 2,000 years old, and the story is more than 2,000 years old, and you can understand that the city looks totally different. Then in that case, uh, when Jesus was crucified, he wasn't crucified in a church. The church was built 300 years later on. Then uh, another thing that you must know is that church, um, their church is uh, owned by everyone, except of some of the Protestants. Um, you will see here Coptic, which, see the entrance there? This is um, Ethiopian church. And you can see Armenian church as well. And Catholic and Greek Orthodox, and name it, they have there. And because of it, there are some problems between the Christians themselves. Uh, but they realize that to be together, to serve Jesus together, is better. In that case, let's start the tour. And let's look at the beautiful dolls. There's a ceremony every day and every night when they open the door and close the door. The funny thing or the strange thing is that um, the Christians couldn't decide who will have the keys to their church. Then what they decided to do is to 
give the keys to the two Muslims families who will open the door every day and will close the door every night and um, and now we can climb up to the Golgotha. What we're gonna do? We can start from the Golgotha, Golgotha, Skull, Calvary, and um, we will start from there because the story started from there. Jesus was walking with his cross on. and reach a small hill by the name Golgotha. And that's where he was crucified. John, Elizabeth, this present is from Rebecca and Betty. That's where they stripped him from his clothes and his agony was started earlier at the Praetorium, but the agony is so strong here as well. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel the agony of him. I can feel the agony of um, his mother. I can feel the agony of the disciples of his. I can feel the agony of your, your agony. And sadly, there are no tourists this year. Um, then I can feel the agony of myself as well. Here he was nailed to the cross. You can see the Roman soldier to the left, the mother, Mary, and Mary Magdalene that anointing his body with the hair of hers. And here you can see uh, John, the disciple, Mary Magdalene, and another two Marys. Of course, Mary the mother watching the crucifixion, which is a horrible thing. To the left, let's bless her the cross. Here, you can see the agony of the mother. This is still a Catholic place, in the Catholic place, but before that, I must, I must tell you that first he was crucified and then Mary held his body, the Pieta, but this is a Catholic part and that is a Greek Orthodox part. And first let's finish the Catholic part here. John and Elizabeth. This is Mary with the spear in her, in her heart. While well, Jesus and all the family came to the temple for their presentation at the temple. Jesus, sorry, Mary, saw Saint Simon who told her that her son will die in front of her eyes. It will be like a spear entering into your heart. Then in that case, uh, the agony was so strong and um, And this is my nightmare. I do have one child. She is 17 years old next month, January. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do if something will happen to her. I cannot even think about it. And I can understand Mary because Mary knew that it's going to happen. And from that moment, she didn't smile at all. Look at the beautiful mosaic in the Catholic area. And the most important one is the crusader music, the only crusader music that left in the church of the resurrection of Christ. Sorry, 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 here it is. The rest been destroyed by fire in 1808. This time not by the enemies of the Christians, this time because of a fire that made my mistake by the Christians. We are moving to the Greek Orthodox part. I know that it's strange, isn't it? 
and this is the crucifixion. That is where um, I think the most tragedy happened. Um, Jesus is in the middle. To the right, you see John, John the disciple, John and Elizabeth, and Mary to the left. While Jesus was on the cross, he asked John to take care of his mother. Heroic, he is suffering, and he's still thinking of his mother. Without it, she will die. Heroic. Then. Let's bless it for you, for John, Elizabeth, and Keith. What you see here is the edge of the Golgotha, the skull, the Calvary. It's um, surrounded with a glass to avoid people like me to take some souvenirs. Above Jesus, you can see his sin list. Jesus from Nazareth, King of the Jews. Let me enter to the exact spot of the crucifixion. And let me bless the cross. The minute I'm blessing it, it's actually totally different now. It's priceless. Jesus was crucified with another two. Look at the mark. This is Jesus. And then the first one. And the second one. Look at the beautiful painting. It's a language, it's not art. I mean, it's art, but it's a language. This is the language of the last hours of Jesus. The Passion. I don't know if you can hear the background. The Greek Orthodox are praying now. It's beautiful to hear, then let's first go to, to listen to it. We're leaving now the gold town and heading to the tomb of Jesus. But before that, you can see the beautiful mosaic wall, really modern. Um, this is the Golgotha, you see where Jesus was crucified, and, and um, one of the reasons, no one knows why it's called the Golgotha, one of the reasons is um, a crucifixion place, and there were so a lot of bones and, and skulls, or maybe it was in, like, in the shape of a skull, like the garden tomb, the second option, outside the Damascus Gate, or or we don't know, but you can see here that here they thought about the skulls. And to show you that everyone knows that Jerusalem was outside the walls, look at that. You can see Jerusalem at the background. Now, later on, as a Jew, they purified his body. They put a linden around his, father, uh, his body and then they bury him. The one who asked the body of, Joseph, of Jesus was Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. Those are the two right people. And John, the disciple, I will say John, a lot John, 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 Elizabeth. Uh, John is now kissing the hand of, of Jesus. You can always recognize him as the disciple without a beard and Mary. The mother, the Mary Magdalene, holding the hair of her. And then they, they uh, crucified, uh, sorry, they buried him in uh, Joseph of Arimathea tomb that was just close to the tomb, to the crucifixion place. And the uh, book of John mentioned it. That's why the crucifixion place 
is next to the tomb that you're gonna see soon. But before that, this is the stone of the, the anointing stone. That's where they anointed the body of Christ. Right there. And what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bless it here. You can see that there's a lot of anointing oil here. It smells amazing. And John, I'm gonna. You can understand now that it's totally priceless. Oh, this one is amazing. Let's go to see the tomb. I won't be able to enter to the tomb with the camera. Then after I will bless it, I will add... Um, I will add... Um, I will enter to the tomb. This is the tomb. You see, you can hear the bells now. I hope that you can. The Greek Orthodox just finished to pray, mm -hmm. and we can talk about the tomb. It doesn't look like a cave, isn't it? That's mainly because it's been destroyed so many times. And what we see here is a dicola, a kind of a chapel that was built on top of it. That chapel has been destroyed a uh, few times as well, and uh, it could be renovated lately. The tomb includes two parts. The first part, just one meter behind that man, the other side. This is the, uh, you can see the light of the candle there. Here it is, you see the light of the candle. This is where he was, and the angels took care that no one will steal the body of of Jesus. The inner part is the tomb and the tomb is empty. And as I mentioned before, John and Elizabeth, Tom Cove, I will uh, do that later on without the camera. Let's enter to another chapel to show you that it used to be Um, used to be a tomb at the time, uh, it used to be a cemetery area at the time of Jesus. I'm trying to convince you with that. Now, the chapel that you see here is not the best chapel, I must say. doesn't look so well, isn't it? But first let's talk about the, the, the um, walls. From here, still here, it's a fourth evidence from the fourth century church, from the church that was built by Constantine and St. Helen, his mother. Amazing. It was so beautiful because Constantine told uh, the bishop here, I don't mind how much it costs. Please do that as big as you can, as beautiful as you can. And you can see those holes. They carry a lot of, uh, of uh, marble. But when someone came to destroy the church, he actually took everything, including the marble, which cost a lot of money. And here around it, you can see that there are so many holes. Because what we believe is that that place was decorated better than the rest because of that. And what it is? Let's use the flashlight. This is a tomb from the time of Jesus. This is not Jesus' tomb. This is the tomb, a tomb from the time of Jesus. Now, what you can see here is some niches. Here you can see two niches. I'm, I don't like entering tombs, but I will do that. Oops. 
some of the coin are closed. You can see it here. And that wall wasn't part of the tomb, it actually built as I believe in the 4th century. Then, I'm going out if it's okay by you. You remember delicious kuchin in Hebrew? Mm. Oh, difficult. Yeah. Now, we don't need the flashlight now. We saw it. They used to bury the dead just like that. Rich Jews were buried in a caves, rock cut caves like that. And you saw niches, I think there were something like 10, no, five niches. But what will happen to the sixth body? I mean, there's no space for him. What they will do, they will open the oldest, the koch, the, old, the oldest niche, and they will take the bones out. They will put it in a small osry, kind of a small box. And then they will put this osry in the storeroom, together with the others. And then they can bury someone else. As a Jew, just like Jesus, they had to bury him at the same day. And now it's around 2 p.m., 1400 hours. In about two hours, it's going to be already Wednesday. Then that's why um, Joseph of Arimathea back to get the body of Jesus. And the Bible mentioned that Joseph of Arimathea gave Jesus his own tongue that no one used before. Now we can understand that no one used before. And before we will go out, uh, who owns that room, uh, chapel, and who, why it looks like that? The first of all, it's not a chair, it's an altar, and it's been destroyed at the fire of 1808. And um, um, the Armenians told the Cyrenic church it's not yours anymore until they figure out who owns it. They won't do a lot here. Um, look how miserable that place looks like. Because there are no tourists, they are renovating the church. And there's a little bit of a noise now. For example, here. And this is a Catholic chapel. That is where Mary Magdalene, that was standing there, saw a gardener, but later on she realized that that was Jesus. You can see it here. And you can see it in a modern version right here as well. Continue. You can see the renovation in process. And this is a place that was actually was renovated lately. I love that place. Think about the story. Jesus came with a cross. Did he crucify him immediately? Actually, we don't know. But some of the uh, Christians, the uh, Greek Orthodox, for example, believe that until the, he was crucified, they put him in kind of a jail prison. to disturb that lady but you saw two holes that's why they put the legs of him and um, he was tied 
in his hand, and uh, he was waiting for the crucifixion time. And now when you know it, I will show it to you again, but I won't talk. If it's okay by me, I want you to I want you to take you to two more places. As you can see, there are so many chapels here. But I want us to enter to the Armenian chapel. The smell of the incense are amazing. This is an Armenian chapel. And again, there are no tourists, and they even close that chapel. Usually, I could enter to show you a little bit more of it. But you can see here the Ark of Noah, and nine cities that have been destroyed by the Turkish in 1915, or around 1915, uh, in Armenia. Uh, for example, Mount Ararat used to be part of Armenia, now it's part of Turkey but it's not the lower part of the church. Then let's continue, John, and let's continue Elizabeth and Kate um, to the lowest part of the church. And the lowest part of the church tells us that this is the oldest part of the church. Now let's talk about what's happening here. Let's start with that. That used to be a quarry at the time of King Herod. Some of the Jewish temple and the most important buildings of King Herod was built from those stones. When he died, no one got paid. And in that case, although it belongs to the government, people started to use it as um, um, tombs, cemetery area. Now, a quarry is always outside the city. Then, in that case, another reason to believe that it was there, it was outside the city. Uh, later on, because of lack of water, people use every hole in the city as a water system. And you can see the plaster on the wall. I'm a little bit disturbed because outside the, outside the church, I heard a lady that says that, and, and she's from America, which is amazing by itself, because there are no tourists here from last week. Maybe she came like two weeks ago, and um, she's one of the last. And she mentioned that her mother, her father-in-law, Brother-in-law, sorry, brother-in-law, Josh, and his, her father is now sick um, because of the COVID. And I didn't know what I didn't know what to do with that information. It's it hurts me when people are feeling like that. Then I decided to light a candle for them as well. And uh, later on, John, Elizabeth, I'm going to light a candle for you, and I will add Rebecca. And now we'll add Leon, if it's okay by you, and uh, Bethy. Um, and I will add Josh and, uh, and Ron, 
if it's okay by you. Although it's your cross, it's, I'm sure that you will say that it's, it's great. Then let's move back to the story. Um, then they use it as a water system. You can see the bucket holes right in front of you. And here, St. Helen came in 300, 335 to here. And uh, when they excavated the place before they built, because the rumor that there was about that place, they found here three crosses. Uh, one cross touched an uh, old lady, a uh, um, um, sick woman, nothing happened. You know what happened at the third cross. That's how they found the cross, the true cross. And uh, I will bless that cross in the same place that they found it. Let's climb up. It's going to be a long, long, long way. Then you saw by yourself that the that church is, is, is big. Um, you need two, three hours to be in every spot of the church, but because there's no tourist and there's no line, there's no queue. Beautiful place. And we're climbing up to the ground floor. You see here a wall with so many crosses. And that wall is earlier. And then that wall, this is a crusader wall, 12th century. That might be from the 11th century, when the Muslims actually controlled the city. I can hear the tractor, remember they're renovating the church. And it's a little bit noisy. Into the church. As I believe it's going out now. Then this is the Calvary, the lower part of it. But let's follow the tractor. I'm so strange, isn't it? rare to see something like that inside a church, but the church is big. About a renovation, there's a status quo, and they cannot change anything that belongs to everyone. They can change places that belong only to them. by tractor and you see that it's a sunny day although it is mm, it is uh, um, winter time it was supposed to be rainy and we just entered to the lower part of uh, the Calvary the Calvary is above us you can see in the window part of it and at around three o'clock the earth shaked and and so many people resurrected but 
of the blood. You can see the creek here because of it, and the blood of Jesus fell or entered into the ground and wake up those people. And some of them, uh, some believe that Adam, the first man ever, Adam and Eve, actually was buried here after the flood, and um, and it actually resurrected. But this is on the Greek Orthodox uh, tradition. It's not written in the Bible. The Bible mentioned that people, um, some people actually resurrect. Then Elizabeth, John, Katie, Kathleen, Catherine, as I believe. Um, thank you very much. Let's see if I can buy a candle. And if not, no, the Armenian is closed, then I will go. I will go to the Greek Orthodox. And I will light candles there. Let me take a little bit of money for it. I'll be back at the court, huh? Let me put the donation box. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're doing it next to the crucifixion, please. Oops. One for John and Elizabeth. One for Kate, if it's okay by you. She deserved her own. And Betty. And Rebecca. And Leon, of course. And that, if it's good with you, for Ron and Charles, remember the story. But let's pray, everyone, everyone who watched that, please. let's pray that everything's okay and they're feeling better. Um, make me so sad. And now I'm a little bit happier. Then please pray for everyone. And thank you for being with me in that beautiful tour of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Thank you, John. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth. Cat. All the noise of renovation. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for watching that video. And please subscribe my channel and send it to everyone. I want to. This is the only way for me to exist now. I'm like I'm doing something good today to humanity. And um, thank you very much. See you in my next video.